Hello and welcome to Studio 7. It's the week before Thanksgiving and many of us are probably planning and preparing for everything that goes into a successful holiday. Let's face it, a big part of that is food. In this week's Kiss the Cook, we'll take a look at some non-traditional side dishes that might help you step outside the box just a little and try something new this year. Plus, if you serve your big meal buffet style, we have some great ideas for creating a beautiful display. And maybe you've invited a few extra guests to share your Thanksgiving meal. We'll show you how to take an old chair from drab to fab. So to kick things off today, it is the dreaded decision. What should we wear for the family Christmas photo? Our expert today has some great ideas for creating a great look for the entire family. Paige Passmore is a stylist and she is our style file expert today. You have some great advice and a lot of people fret over the decision to make. What's the first thing that you can tell us about choosing the right outfits for a family? Wearing neutrals. I think people sometimes go for something really bright or really trendy and I think neutrals is an easy way to look great and everybody look like they belong together without compromising their own sense of self. And so you say the focus should be on the people and neutrals right. allows you to right. know the first thing you see in the photo is, is a face. your beautiful face as opposed to a really bright shirt or a bunch of rhinestones or something like that. So I think wearing neutrals is the place where we want to start and then you can build from there. And does neutrals mean, tell me, that grays, blacks? Grays, blacks, browns, navy is now considered a neutral, beige, tan, anything in that color family. Okay, and this is an important one, especially if you have children involved. Be right. comfortable, right? Right. Be comfortable. Because we don't want fits. You know, you only have a certain amount of time with a <laughs> photographer, so we want to make sure everybody's comfortable. And you can tell if someone looks comfortable in a photo. I remember one year I had my uh, three-year-old wear uh, like a sequin hat and <laughs> it itched. It was awful. She was miserable and the experience was miserable. Right, so right. And it, you wasted time that you could have been taking pictures worrying about her feeling okay. So. Okay, now this one, I love this because for a lot of years that matchy matchy thing yes. where we all wore white shirts or we all mm -hmm. wore, you know, the all Christmas denim, sweater. All denim, head to toe. <laughs> it, unless you're going for a look that says tongue in cheek, right. matchy matchy is probably not the way to go. It isn't, it isn't. You want everybody to look like themselves. Um, and so you want to just have a nice flow to the photograph as opposed to everybody looking like a set of quadruplets. So we want to stay away from head to toe matching, but we also don't want to look exactly like our mom or our dad or husband, wife. And so what would you, what would, what would the verbal instructions be for a family? Like what would you say to them? Hey, everybody wear. I would say everybody wear a form of blue. Let's stay away from turquoise, but if you want to go baby blue to navy. And then you can, some people might want to wear khaki on the bottom or denim or a dress. Yeah. But that way, it's very easy to look uniform without looking identical. And it takes the pressure off of the planning. I love that you say this. It does. The last thing you tell us is to avoid being very trendy or having very bright colors for pretty obvious reasons. For very obvious reasons. The trend thing is kind of hard because you want to look cute and you want to look stylish. But you can do that without looking like 2013. <laughs> because when you look back in 2030, you're going to think, why was I wearing that? <laughs> right. For instance, the skinny jeans on men right now are popular. <laughs> but they may only be popular for another six months. <laughs> so we, we want to stay away from something that says 2013. We just want to look classic and cool and relaxed. And those are the most important things when it comes to taking a photograph that's going to be remembered up in your home or in the photo album for the rest of your life. This is such great advice <laughs> and this can be such a difficult thing for a lot of people. Paige, thank you so much for your ideas. You're get out there well. and get those Christmas cards made because it is time to go, get, is. get them on the we mailing get list. On it. Up next here on Studio 7, do you make the same Thanksgiving dishes each and every year? How about trying something new this year? Renee Elford is up next with this week's Kiss the Cook. Stay with us on Studio 7. Welcome back to Studio 7. It is easy to get into a pattern with our Thanksgiving meals. Many of us prepare the same side dishes each year, and that's a good thing. But why don't we all try something a little more non-traditional this year as well? It's time for this week's Kiss the Cook. We're here in Renee Elfert's kitchen, and we are about a week out of Thanksgiving. And today we have some great ideas for your Thanksgiving meal. These are out of the box. Now listen, I do broccoli and cheese with rice casserole and green beans with the crunchy stuff. Uh -huh. But you say we can do something different. We can do something fun. And I am so excited. 
excited tonight. I have one of my very best friends, Terry Lynn Babb, joining us tonight. And she and I have known each other since we were little bitty. And we've always kind of been each other's go-to culinary question person. And uh, tonight she's going to share something that, that she makes for her Thanksgiving table. And I'm going to share a little bit of something here. So, Terry Lynn, do you want to talk to them about yours first? Sure. Tonight I made some uh, acorn squash. I roasted it, sauteed it with a little bit of olive oil. And when it gets about fork tender, I add a little bit of brown sugar and then fresh rosemary. And so, just for people like me, this is how it starts. This is how it starts. <laughs> you take the seeds out, of course, and then I like to kind of cut it like I do a cantaloupe. That That's makes how. sense to me. Take out the seeds. Yes, ma'am. And then you put it in there and saute it. That's it. Oh, okay. that is. This is something you can get your husband to get in there and help you with because that's a little bit tough sometimes to cut that acorn squash, but it's very easy once you get it cut. And you can leave the skin off or on, can't you, right. on the outside? I, I, it, it stays together better if you leave the skin on. Oh, it's so pretty. And it is out of the box. It's something different that we don't have every single year. Okay. What's hey, this? These are Brussels sprouts. We've just taken a pound of Brussels sprouts, cut them in half, and roasted them. When it says roast them, you just get them where they're just kind of barely brown. We roasted them in a little garlic, I mean in a little olive oil with garlic and shallots till they get a little bit brown. And we're going to, after they get done, just toss in some toasted pecans and some of these dried cranberries. Well, back you know, to I love cranberries. cranberries. That's right. And toss those around. And Sharon, if you'll hand me that and then you just take and brown a little bit of butter. And brown butter makes everything taste so good. Uh, you simply just put your butter over heat until it forms little brown flecks. Kind of turns a little bit brown and it just gives it a richer, deeper flavor. And toss it with that. And it's so pretty and that's oh. all you have to do. Okay, now I have, don't know that I've ever had a Brussels sprout, so this is a first on TV. Oh. Oh, that's good, too. Good. I know where you should have Thanksgiving dinner, right here. Oh, that is so good. Okay, we're going to transition things around a little bit and move this over here. Renee, this is so gorgeous to look at. Tell me a little bit about what we got going on here. Okay, uh, when we were growing up, it just wasn't Thanksgiving as far as our grandmothers were concerned, unless you had a relish tray. Normally, we didn't eat Thanksgiving dinner until late in the afternoon, early evening, and everyone's coming in the kitchen wanting to know what they can eat and what they can nibble on. So we uh, have a little relish tray here that you can keep out for people to nibble on, and then Terry Lynn's going to walk us through a fabulous salmon dip that oh. is a tradition in her family. See, I wouldn't want to people to nibble on it because it looks so good. I would say, get your hands away. This is too well, you can put, not just to look at. I uh, know you can put anything you want to on this. We've got little baby cucumbers, little cherry tomatoes. This is a really fun, perfect. Uh, cauliflower that you can find. Okay, now it comes like that. It comes like that. It's really pretty. Wow. These were actually purple asparagus, but they turned green during the cooking process. I just barely blanched them so they'll be crisp. And uh, just pickled beets. And this is fun. It's a little bit of a kickoff on the traditional stuffed celery that you'd normally, a lot of people stuff with pimento cheese. And this is cream cheese, toasted walnuts, bacon, and cranberries. My cranberries again. Yeah. Uh, stuffed in a celery stick. Right. Okay, Terry Lynn, this smells so good. I can't wait for you to tell me what's in this. Okay. In our family, um, salmon salad was kind of a tradition. And last night I roasted some fresh salmon. And you just add a little bit of mayo. Okay. Sweet pickle relish. Okay. Do you want me to do this? Yes, absolutely. They trust me to put the ingredients in. Okay, so there's the mayo. Uh huh. A little sweet pickle relish. Okay. And you can use dill as well, and you can also just use canned salmon. You don't have to be. Okay, so a lot of people will right. want to know that. And it's, right. it's equally as good. Equally as good. Okay. And, and onions. Uh, eggs. And these eggs. And mix it all up, and you're done. See, I'm not even as good at mixing as you guys are. Can you make this the day before? You could make it the day before, yes. You can make a lot of this stuff the night before. Put, you could do this actually the night before. Put saran wrap on it. That way you don't have to worry about that during the day while you're cooking. And that's three you your process. Right. Okay, can I taste? Absolutely. I'm tasting the one you made. It looks so good. All right. Mm. So good, ladies. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. New and unique ways to celebrate Thanksgiving in the kitchen. Now, last week we shared some ideas for dressing up your Thanksgiving tables. Today, let's take a look at some ideas for setting up the buffet. I'm here today with Heather Valenzuela, and we're talking about our Thanksgiving table. Some families sit around the table and pass the dishes around, but this is an idea for how to make a beautiful buffet so that everyone can kind of serve themselves. And I love the centerpiece of this. How do you achieve this? All this is, Tatum, is 
Tupperware containers. You could even go into your child's bedroom full of baby dolls or pretty ponies or whatever and put them under here where they're heavy so they'll stay stable. Okay. And put your tablecloth on top of it and it covers it up. You could use books. You can use, turn this bowl upside down. And so that's what I see here is all the different levels, which makes it so Because you want pretty. that. You want the high and the low because it's more interesting. If we were sitting at this table across from one another, I wouldn't make it quite as high. Sure. Because you want to be able to see the people you're eating with. It's so pretty. And so these are actually real pumpkins. And then I love the linens that you have on this table and you have a secret that is I life. love. This is a life changer. This is a life changer. If you um, don't want to buy linens and linens are expensive yeah. and it's hard to find just that right color and then you buy that and you don't want to use it again next year. Oh and here's the worst part. Try to iron it and iron get it, it and yeah. wash it and get the stains out. So I have a friend named Carol Aiken. She owns Bride Smart on 8th Street. And she rents these beautiful linens for a very inexpensive price. Wow. And this is actually two tablecloths and a runner that she has. Okay. So I went in today, got these from her. I'll take them back to her tomorrow. She'll wash them, iron them, put them back on the hanger, oh and then gosh. the next time you need to rent them, you can go in and rent these from her. There's the beauty right there. Okay, and so the, you, this is not perfect, and that's right. the idea. You kind of have made ruffles and bends where it serves mm -hmm. your, your purpose. And you want to do that because you don't want it to look too perfect. Yeah. Then it's not as comfortable. Now tell me about the dishes because this is kind of mix and match, mm -hmm. silver and pottery and glass, and that, you say eclectic is, is a good thing. Eclectic is great because they're yeah. found things, things that you've gotten as a gift, Gift, things that you've gotten from an artist. Yeah. Your silver pieces kind of give you some stability. Yeah. And your glass pieces, I would fill with things that are colored. I would put Brussels sprouts maybe in that one, fruit in this one, because it gives it a little pop, but it shows off your pretty. Oh, those are two food. good tips. No matchy matchy and show off the food that has bright, pretty colors mm -hmm. in your glass bowls. I love that. Right. Okay, but we're not done because if you're like me and maybe you're a paper plate girl. I am. You can still make those look really nice. You can. You can get chargers. These are just chargers from Hobby Lobby, and they're 50 cents when they're on sale. Then it looks special. It does look special. You throw this away. This is no not glass. No dishes to wash. Right. Okay, I love this too. You have these little individual signs that you will put in the dishes right. once they're done. Right. And then you put the silverware wrapped in a paper napkin, which is quick and easy. There's no washing this. Last thing, I love these cards that you had printed. They say, for this, I am thankful. It's a great conversation starter. Absolutely. And keeps us, keeps the why we're here, why right. we're celebrating together. Exactly. Heather, this is gorgeous. Thank you so much Thank for sharing. You. When we come back on Studio 7, if you are expecting a few extra guests this Thanksgiving, maybe you need a few extra chairs. We'll show you how to take them from drab to fab next on Studio 7. Stay with us. Welcome back to Studio 7. Inviting a friend to share your Thanksgiving meal is a blessing, and it might also be a great excuse to refinish a chair that's in your home. The process is not as hard as you might think. Today, we're walking you through the process in this week's Grab to Fab. Jessica Fair joins us now. We're talking about recovering chairs. It is always amazing to me what a huge difference it makes to change the seat, change the color, and this is a perfect example of that. Yes, and you always have that one extra guest and need that one extra chair, and so why not make it a fun accent piece when you're not using it? I love that. And these were just great finds. I got both of these chairs for $2 a piece. Wait, I think you said $2. I did say $2. $2 yeah. a piece. Okay, so you don't love the, the seat cushion. No, I don't love the seat cushion and I don't love the old dated wood. Okay. So what I've already done here is I've primed the other chair with just some basic flat white primer and then I picked my color. I wanna do gold because it'll intermix with any color that I have. And then I found this really trendy print that it has kind of a burlap linen tweed feel. And I think that'll just look great with the gold. And so what I'll do is I'll paint first and then I'll recover the seat. Okay, so speaking of recovering, we're talking about a staple gun. Is that what you a use? A staple gun. This is a lot easier than some people think, right? It is so easy and nobody sees the bottom of your cushion. And so just use a staple gun. You don't have to be a professional upholster. And you literally just take your hand, take, take the fabric and mm -hmm. wrap it around, get it as tight as you can. Think about like you're wrapping a box for Christmas. So you kind of want to pinch the edges and then fold it real tight and staple. 
so that it'll stay. And I have an example of a cushion that I've already done so we can see what it looks like on underneath. And this is an example of a finished product. I mean, you painted this chair a bright color, added some great accent pillows. Yes, and new chair. And it used to look like one of those, a dingy old cushion and the ugly brown that needed to be updated. And so why not? give it a little pink and pizzazz. That is absolutely drab fab. Jessica, thank you so much for the ideas. Jessica always has great ideas for us, but you also can take care of these projects. So if you're more like me and you love it, but you're not so sure you had the time to do it, you can contact Jessica. We have her website listed there at the bottom of your screen. Jessica, thank you so much. Thank for you. Today. Still ahead on Studio 7, we've talked a lot about food today and feeding our families, but what about feeding your souls? Our Getting Real contributor, Jessica Phillips, joins us next with some great ideas on how to use soul food to improve our lives. Stay with us on Studio 7. Coming up next week on Studio 7, what can you do with all of the Thanksgiving leftovers that you will inevitably have? We have some brilliant ideas from Renee Elfert's kitchen, and it's time to get that Christmas tree up. So how about some tips for making the process fast and fabulous? It's all next Monday at 4.30, right here on Studio 7. Welcome back to Studio 7. This week we've spent a lot of time talking about food, how to cook it, how to serve it, how to make it look pretty. But we also need to broaden our perspective just a little bit and think about feeding our souls as well. Our relationship contributor Jessica Phillips is here with us today and we're talking about getting real when it comes to soul food. Jessica, thanks so much for being here with us today. You say for many of us, our souls really are crying out for nourishment. Absolutely, we focus so much in Western culture about what we are going to eat. We plan trips around <laughs> food, we plan dates around food, but what is really crying out for food and nourishment are our souls because we're not just made up of bodies. There's an inner thing going on inside of us, an inner person, and and it's starving sometimes. And and. You go to church, I go to church, but even going once a week, could you live on one meal a week? No, ma'am. No, <laughs> let, me, let me think. No, no, <laughs> me either. My dad gave uh, Brad the best advice when we were dating. He said, Brad, don't ever stick your hand in the cage if Jessica's tired or hungry. <laughs> and that's true of my soul. If, if I'm hungry, if I have not fed my soul, I'm grumpy, I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm short-tempered, and if you stick your hand in the cage, I might bite your head off. Yes. And so we need to feed our souls, especially during these holiday seasons when we don't take enough time to reflect on things that are really important. And so it's a conscious effort to do that because I think even as mothers, we probably feed our children's souls. I mean, we're very we aware and conscious of that, our spouses. Yes. But we have to do it for ourselves. And you have some great advice for us. The first thing you say is we have to receive the soul food. That's right, receive it. And there's two easy ways. You have to read or you have to listen. And I know some people do not like to read. Um, read anyway. Read 20 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day and read about um, where you're at in life. If you're dealing with divorce or you're dealing with teenage kids, um, read about those subjects that help you, that teach you, that expand you and make you learn and grow. So read about those things. And if you go, you know what? I'm gonna be honest, I'm just not gonna read. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you can download podcasts on your phone and you can press play and it doesn't require any more time than you are already using in your day. I throw in my podcast when I get in the shower. Mm -hmm. I hit play and I listen to podcasts while I'm, I'm already gonna take the shower. I'm already gonna put on my makeup. So I might as well add value to those tasks. That's a brilliant life-changing idea. I mean, I, I really love that. It's really simple. And some of my favorite podcasts are, Andy Stanley has one called Your Move. Um, lifechurch.tv has one with um, Pastor Craig Grishel. And, and maybe you're not a Christian and you go, I don't want anything to do with those, you know, don't give me those Bible topics, that's fine. Download the TED Talks. TED is incredible, it, it, it's innovative ideas and technology and, and design and talks about culture and it's people from all over the world expanding our horizons. Um, I'm gonna list an extensive list of my favorite books and my favorite podcasts on my website this week, Jessica Phillips phillips.biz and also on the Studio 7 Facebook page. So if you're wanting a list of men's issues, women's issues, it'll all be there for, for you to look up. The second step you have for us is to reflect on what you've just received. Yes, we have got to internalize it and meditate on it. Think about it. And sometimes the way I meditate best is I may listen to a podcast every day for five days mm -hmm. because I'm not gonna get everything I need from that lesson 
the first time I hear it. Right. So I'm going to take that in, meditate, let it really mess with me, let it really challenge what I'm thinking. I like that, mess with you. Mess me and up. And meditate gets kind of a bad connotation because it doesn't mean, um, no. I mean, you know, <laughs> meditate has evolved. It does. And I think that means really fixing your mind on it, like letting your mind really settle on those thoughts and think it through it and mess with you. I like that. Yeah. And the last thing is respond to it. You hear it, you take it in, respond. Respond, have some kind of response. The Bible says don't be just hearers of the word, be doers. So don't just take in everything you're hearing, do something with it. And I say, if you're not a writer, it doesn't matter, write. Pull out a journal and say, hey, this week I heard this message about this or this lesson about this, and here's what it, it made me think. It challenged my thinking on this or it gave me a new perspective. And write just a couple of things because you will look back over your life in those journals and that will be a chronicle of your journey in this life and you may be able to pass that on to your kids or your grandkids one day and it'll just be it could be something really special in your family i love those ideas thank you so much again jessica will give us some ideas on our facebook page and we'll link you to her website for some great uh, books and reference materials to yeah. do all these steps jessica thank you so much for being here today okay. it's time now for this week's five things we love let's see what we're crazy about today Day. Here's something I love. It's CoverGirl Wet Slicks Lip Gloss. This is Berry Splash. It shines and it tastes so good. One of the things I like is cufflinks. And I have quite a collection thanks to my wife and uh, I get these all over at antique stores. One thing I love and can't live without and neither can my plants is a plant nanny. And I also love the line. Here's something I double love. I love these foaming soaps from Bath & Body Works and they go with the seasons. These are Christmas. I love this. It's dry shampoo. You can use it when the color grows out of your hair or at the end of the day when it's a little greasy. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Studio 7. We hope you are inspired. We hope you had some fun. And we really hope you'll make an appointment with us every Monday at 430. If you have questions or ideas about the show, visit us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And check back in often throughout the day for a dose of inspiration. And we'll be giving away a brand new iPhone 5 to one lucky viewer. Just like our Studio 7 Facebook page and you might be the winner. You can find a link for all of that information at CBS7.com. We'd like to thank our partners at Sewell Ford for helping us focus on inspiration, style, and everyday living. Thanks again for watching Studio 7. We'll see you next week.